had a childhood hero you looked up to as a kid? Raise your hands. Okay, mine was Chuck Norris. He was always the underdog. He was always outnumbered in his movies, but after a flurry of fists whoosh, and feet, he always came out on top. And I think one of the reasons I liked him so much is that I felt like I was an underdog. I grew up in uh, Southeast Idaho. I know, celebrities come from there. <laughs> Southeast Idaho. I, had, I was in a special reading class, which means I wasn't a good reader. I was really scrawny for my age, and I was the middle of nine boys. Oh. Yeah. So, Chuck Norris, Ernie Harker. So you can imagine my surprise when years later I find myself in a beautiful home theater, in a leather luxury recliner, watching a Chuck Norris movie within hand-holding distance of Chuck Norris. What? That was awesome, right? That's not the end of my story, but great experiences like this can always be traced back to a single decision. The decision to silence the dream killer. Yeah, you know the dream killer. He sounds like this in my head. Ernie, you want to start eating right, please? You couldn't say no to a Cheeto or a Dorito or an Oreo or anything that ends with O. You want to charge how much for a speaking appointment? <laughs> Who do you think you are, Clint Pulver? <laughs> like, but here's, here's why this is important. The best version of ourselves stands on the other side of uncertainty. It requires us to risk failure. And the dream killer always stands at the crossroads. The key is learning how to silence the dream killer. After about 25 years in the advertising and marketing business, I decided it was time for me to write a book. That was the hardest thing I have ever done. Right? You've read a book. If anybody's written a book, it's, it's brutal. There should be an award given to authors with ADD because I could not start a sentence without thinking of a dozen ways to finish it. So after hundreds, I'm not kidding, hundreds of hours, herding word cats, my book finally started coming together. And I thought, now's the time for me to do a little bit of book cover design research. I want my brand to pop, right? There are so many books on branding. The more I saw, the more discouraged I got. And then, you got the dream killer. Ernie, does the world really need another book on branding? Seriously, no one's going to buy it or read it. Give it up. Besides, everything else you've done has been a complete failure. What makes you think this will be any different? Boom. This time, I believe the dream killer was right. I'd been thinking about a lot of my failures, and man, that hit. It started... This, these depre this, I was depressed, I was getting pressure on my soul from these failures, like a, like a warm can of generic root beer being shaken. <laughs> and I was gonna blow. But one of, my, one of my buddies saw me and he said, Ernie, what is wrong? He, I wasn't my usual self. I projectile vomited my failures all over him. <laughs> the business I started in 1995 failed. The television series I produced, the animated series, the How to Draw book, the children's book, fail, 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 fail. Everyone around me has got the Midas touch but me. Everybody's got success except me. There's a story about an ancient prophet who forges glass stones and he brings them to the top of a mountain and asks God to touch them to give them light. I felt like I was one of those glass stones begging God to pick me, pick me. And he's like, nah, um, how about Billy Bass, the singing fish on the wall? Bing! And I'm going, Lord, pick me, pick me, please. I'm doing, I'm... how about the Kardashians? Bing! How about the Thigh Master? Bing! Are you serious? I was convinced even God didn't want me to succeed. I was a mess. I gave up writing my book. It was just, and my buddy, his arm around me and he said, Ernie, you get credit for trying. 
But in a strange way, what I understood is that trying is success. Success isn't the outcome of our trying. See, outcomes are super important, I get it. But if we measure sex success only based on outcomes, most of our lives we lived in an unsuccessful state. That sounds terrible. <laughs> That's the life I was living. But if success is defined by the effort, we could spell success with three C's instead of two. Create a plan. Crush the plan. Celebrate crushing up the plan. That is success. If we don't get the desired outcome, no worries. Create a new plan. Crush the new plan. Celebrate, revise, repeat. This new definition of success opened my eyes. It reframed how I thought about things. I finished my book. I, it took the teeth out of the dream killer. I wasn't afraid to fail anymore because I was doing success every day. Now it works for everything, by the way. I was leading a brainstorm session for a convenience store chain. We needed to come up with the coolest, biggest, baddest sweepstakes prize ever. It needed to be so cool that 18 to 45 year old men who work out of a truck, landscapers, contractors, plumbers, you would have to get them so excited, they would join the loyalty program and then spend all their rewards on entries to win. It had to be awesome. One person said, how about a year supply of beer? I'm like, that's probably, that's good. And then somebody else, how about $100,000? Like, well, maybe. But. Then someone else said, how about we give them the ultimate work truck built by the Diesel Brothers? We'll call it Truck Norris. <laughs> oh my gosh, we love this idea, especially me. Especially me. Then the voice of the dream killer. Ernie, you're gonna get sued. <laughs> Chuck Norris is unreachable. He'll never want to work with a convenience store chain. But with my new definition of what success was, success wasn't getting Chuck Norris to, to do it with us. Success was asking Chuck to do it. So we created a plan. The first part of that plan was to get a hold of Chuck Norris's agent. Okay, a lot of people think they're Chuck Norris's agent. They're not. So after, like literally months of dead ends and round turns, uh, and round turns, we finally reached Chuck Norris's agent. We pitched him, and the agent said, no. Ernie. I tried to warn you, but you wouldn't listen. But at least I tried, right? Right. Because a few weeks later, I get a call from Gina Norris, Chuck Norris's wife. She wants to know more about the Chuck Norris campaign. My hands started sweating. My mouth got as dry as it is now. And I choked out the worst pitch of my career. Gina said, we're in on one condition. And I'm like, condition? Carlos and I discovered, by the way, Carlos is Chuck Norris's real name. <laughs> Carlos and I discovered water, pure source of water on our ranch in Navasota, Texas. We decided to bottle it and sell it so we can raise money for our Kickstart Kids charity. If you agree to be the first retailer to sell our water, we'll give you permission to use the word Truck Norris and give you access to Chuck Norris for your promotional materials. Dun, 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 dun! We're in! A few months later, I'm in Navasota, Texas with this awesome Truck Norris and we're, I'm, directing, I'm, I'm directing Chuck Norris, the kid from Idaho. We have so much fun, he invites me to work out with him in his home gym. Then he says, let's have dinner in my house. I'm right here, Chuck's right here. He says, Ernie, what do you wanna do now? I said, Carlos? <laughs> With anime eyes twinkling full of hero worship, can we watch a Chuck Norris movie together? Let's do it. A few moments later, I'm sitting in a theater in a leather luxury recliner with a big piece of apple pie on my lap, holding hands, well, almost holding hands with Chuck Norris. <laughs> Great things can happen when we silence the dream killer and spell success with three C's. Create, oh yeah, time, create, crush, thank you, celebrate. Success is inevitable. Two seconds left. Oh